Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, and may I ask you all now please to rise for the changing of the watch. Honor Guard, please change the watch. Thank you, gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, and particular welcome to Tamara Fields and Jessica Barnhart, who are with us today from Louisiana, to Wally and Vera Whitehorn, who are in from South Africa, and Elise Sawalha, who has joined us from Jordan. To the family and friends of Ani Asfar, welcome each and every one of you. Madam Deputy Secretary of State, Madam Counselor of the Department of State, Deputy Assistant Secretaries from the Department of State, and other senior officials. Welcome. Madam Charge d'Affaires of the Embassy of Jordan, senior diplomatic representatives of the Palestinian Authority to the United States. Welcome. Senior representatives of United States law enforcement, including the International Association of Chiefs of Police, the Calcasieu Parish Sheriff's Office, the Texas Department of Public Safety, and the Orange County, Florida Sheriff's Office. Welcome to the Chief Executive Officer and other senior officers of DynCorp and the General Manager of South Corporation. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Today is the last day of National Law Enforcement Week here in the city of Washington. This is a week when law enforcement comes together from all across the United States of America to honor, hold vigils for, and where appropriate mourn those of their colleagues and comrades who have given their lives in the preceding year. It is not a coincidence that we are holding this ceremony today, the last day of National Law Enforcement Week in the United States. It is my sad honor to preside today over the addition of the 94th, 95th, 96th, and 97th names to be inscribed on this memorial wall for those who have given their lives while performing a law enforcement and security mission for the Department of State. Today we honor Kamal al Yeya, a citizen of Jordan, Auni Asfar, a citizen of Jordan, Conrad Vaughn Whitehorn, a citizen of the Republic of South Africa, and Lloyd Carl Fields, a citizen of the United States of America. A fifth person died that terrible day in November of last year at the Jordan International Police Training Center. His name was James D. Creech. He was a police trainer for the Bureau of Diplomatic Security of the Department of State. And while he died with his four colleagues and comrades that same day, he will be honored by the Diplomatic Security Service at their own event and their own place. All of these individuals are in fact people, not names on a wall. They are not a set of letters that have been inscribed on a plaque. They are, in fact, four lives 
who made the world a somewhat better place from their time on it. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure and my distinct honor to introduce to you the Deputy Secretary of State of the United States of America, Heather Higginbottom. Good morning. Thank you, Bill, for all that you and your team and those who work with you do to foster justice and security around the world. Today, we honor four fallen heroes who gave their lives so that others may know peace, prosperity, and freedom. Kamal Alyeye, Ani Asfar, Lloyd Carl Fields Jr., and Conrad Vaughn Whitehorn. I want to welcome you to the State Department on this somber occasion, especially the families of those who we are honoring today. Several members of Ani Asfar's family have traveled from Chicago and San Diego. Tamara Fields and Jessica Barnhart, wife and stepdaughter of Carl Fields, are joining us from Cape Coral, Florida. And Wally and Vera Whitehorn and Delisa Walha, the parents and fiance of Conrad Whitehorn, have come all the way from South Africa and Jordan to be here. We are honored and humbled by your presence. To the families, loved ones, and friends who are here to remember these four individuals, as well as those who are unable to make this trip to Washington, we extend our deepest condolences. The heroes we recognize supported the Bureau of International Narcotics and Law Enforcement Affairs, but their legacy is one of service to all people. Every day, Crime and corruption steal opportunities away from entire nations, and they threaten universal values like justice and the rule of law. In our globalized world, crime and corruption do not respect borders or boundaries, and wherever and wherever they take root, they endanger us all. At the International Police Training Center in Jordan, today's honorees were working to make communities around the world safer and more prosperous. Helping other countries develop their criminal justice systems, fight corruption, and combat illegal drugs is not easy work. And today's ceremony reminds us that it can also be dangerous. There are 97 names on the INL Memorial Wall, courageous women and men who gave their lives to make the world more peaceful, more just, and more secure. They supported a wide array of critical missions abroad, including building police and justice sector capacity in Iraq, counter-narcotics operations in Colombia, prison reform in Kosovo, and rule of law programs in Afghanistan. This memorial wall is far more than an accounting of courage and sacrifice under fire. Each name on the wall represents an individual husbands, mothers, daughters, brothers, friends, who made the world a little bit better. It is a legacy of individuals with stories that we must never forget. This wall honors brave Americans and the courageous heroes of many other nations, including Jordan, which we add for the first time today. The four men we recognize hailed from three different countries, but they came together as a team at the Jordan International Police Training Center, known as GYPTIC. The team's mission was to advance the Palestinian Authority Security Assistance Program, which aims to help the Palestinian Authority build and maintain its security and justice sectors as part of broader efforts to advance a negotiated two-state solution to the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. These four were working at the training center on November 9, 2015, when a gunman attacked their dining facility. This senseless act of violence also claimed another American trainer and wounded nine others. As we gather to mourn their loss today, we also celebrate their lives. Kamal Alyeye from Jordan was a son and a brother, and he had planned to ask his longtime girlfriend to marry him. Kamal was an interpreter at the training center, and his skills were well known and sought after. Kamal was a gifted linguist, speaking his native Arabic, as well as English, Dutch, and French. He was an invaluable member of the Gyptic team, and his talents went far beyond the languages he mastered. 
After receiving a degree in aeronautics, Kamal worked for eight years as an aircraft technician for the Royal Jordanian Air Force. He possessed a rare combination of gifts that led him to be successful in many different types of work. Ani Asfar was from Amman, Jordan, and is survived by his wife, Ghadir Abu Salem, and their four children. Everyone who knew Ani enjoyed his infectious sense of humor and his upbeat personality. He wasn't just fun to be around. He was also known as a man of great honor and integrity. He led by example, earning a reputation as someone who would accept any challenge and help anyone who needed it. Colleagues describe Ani's great dedication to his work and his even greater devotion to his family. Carl Fields from Cape Coral, Florida, was a husband, father, and grandfather. He called his granddaughter his princess. Prior to deploying to Jordan, Carl served as an international police advisor for DynCorp in Iraq, then in Afghanistan. Before that, he was a deputy in the sheriff's office in Calcasso Parish, Louisiana. As a member of the US Army, he served on the front lines of the Cold War, working checkpoint operations at the border between East and West Germany. Over and over, time and again, Carl served his country and his community with distinction. Conrad Whitehorn from Johannesburg, South Africa, had been in Jordan and the West Bank since 2008, serving as an advisor, trainer, and mentor on many aspects of policing. He worked his way up to become the deputy team lead of mobile training. Conrad was the kind of man everyone wanted around. He was extraordinarily detail-oriented. Some would say a perfectionist, and it showed in his work. He was a sponge, always looking for new opportunities to expand his knowledge and improve. These qualities served him well throughout his career, and they would no doubt have made him a wonderful husband. It is with heavy hearts and deep gratitude that we add the names of each of these extraordinary individuals to the memorial wall. Their names will forever be honored here, where the thousands of diplomats and visitors who pass through each day will be reminded of their great contributions as well as their great sacrifice. To the families of these four heroes, I say this, the State Department family who pass by your loved one's names each day will be working tirelessly to honor their sacrifice and advance the ideals for which they so bravely stood. As Secretary Kerry has said, we are working, all of us together, to try to create order where there is none, to bring stability out of chaos, to fix what is broken, and to make this complicated world just a little bit less complicated and a lot more free. In that spirit, we remember Kamal, Ani, Carl, and Conrad, and all of those memorialized here. We remember each of them for their bravery, their sacrifice, and for the lives they led. It is now my honor to present American flags to Mr. Asfar's nephew, Mr. Field's wife, and Mr. Whitehorn's parents. A flag will also be presented to Mr. Alyeye's family in Jordan. Thank you. Honor Guard, march on the flag.
Ladies and gentlemen, a word of explanation for what has just happened, particularly for those who have come from South Africa and Jordan. In the United States, it is traditional when someone gives his life in the service of his nation to receive a flag from the nation to express our gratitude and appreciation. We are not recruiting you for American citizenship. We are saying thank you. Honor Guard, march on the wreath. Ladies and gentlemen, may I remind you that on that wall are 97 names. But each name represents a person who made the ultimate sacrifice in trying to bring greater security to their nations, to their communities, to their families. They committed themselves to a cause, not a job. Law enforcement is a profession. It is not work. They are people, not names. Chris Kriskovich is not a name. He was an FBI officer and a friend of mine. We met in 1982 in El Salvador where he put together the first U.S. police training mission anywhere in the world. In 1997, he joined the U.N. police mission to Bosnia. I asked him a few weeks earlier why he was going to Bosnia, and in his usual sarcastic and snide way, he said he didn't think there were any other Croatian Americans in the entire Department of State, and he figured he might as well go. Kriskovic died in a helicopter crash. in 1997. Kim Bigley is not a name. She was a 19-year veteran of the Illinois Corrections Service. She rose to become a warden of a prison, retired, and decided she could continue to contribute and volunteered for the UN Corrections Mission to Kosovo in 2004. She was killed by a sniper in April of 2004. You will find her name on the first plaque second column. Johan Hutting was not a name. He was a South African soldier who spent 10 years in the South African Army. And upon retiring from the Army, volunteered for the Iraqi National Police Training Mission in 2004. Hutting was killed by a suicide bomber. In October 2004, you will find his name on the first plaque in the third column. 97 names, 97 stories, 97 lives. Families, your son, husband, father, brother, uncle, on this wall, they are in good company. And now, ladies and gentlemen, in the United States, and perhaps in a few other countries as well, it is traditional in the law enforcement community to say farewell to those of us that we have lost with the music of the bagpipe. Pipe master, would you play us a hymn, please?
Thank you, Pipe Master. Ladies and gentlemen, may I ask you to rise once more for the changing of the watch. Honor Guard, please change the watch. Thank you, gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes our ceremony this morning. I invite the families first to come forward, visit the wall, and if they choose, write into the book. And I invite everyone else, obviously, to drop by the wall as well. Thank you very much for coming.